So with all that going the way it is, with all these digital library, the way it's set up, is anyone implementing AI into this to get some artificial yeah. intel that, that's already going on? Well, th there, are there are two basic areas, theoretically, where progress like that can be made. One is, as I said, the tablets are often fragmentary or broken. So one of our most important collections is the royal library from Assyria from the seventh century when there was an Assyrian king called Ashurbanipal who was a famous warrior and a famous administrator you know a proper king in the ancient world but also had this library and in the 19th century they found this library um, rather the worse for wear with many fragments many broken tablets about 20,000 of them which came to London and so a lot of what we know, because of the scholars who worked on it, since these tablets are very clearly written, um, a lot of what we know comes from the tablets in this library. All the genre I mentioned before are attested in this library. So it's really, really important. And one thing is, if there are 20,000 tablets and pieces, you can make a join if you work on something and then you see something and you think, ah, this goes here. But this is a very slow and pedestrian way. Mm -hmm. So. If you have digital photographs of all the pieces, mm -hmm. then if you are energetic and your program allows it, you can make joins um, by when you have a, a large piece with a jagged side and there's, you look at the fragments of the same kind of thing and you, and you see a profile that fits, you can actually move it on screen and find joins that way. And if you have a sophisticated program of investigation that can be very fertile and the more people that do it the more it happens and of course the idea is to join as much as possible so that mechanical thing has a great advantage as being more efficient and um, perhaps than uh, a, a person like me who makes a lot of joins by flair or by memory but not by system and they could do it by system so you know when you do a jigsaw you open the box and you have all the bits on the table and a sensible person makes all the edges first and then they get all the blue stuff for the sky and all the green stuff for the grass and so they and it's the same thing if you have the left hand side of a tablet and the top's missing then you know the machine would look for a bit that fitted along the top to help construct it so that part of your question yes it can be done it's just expensive the other side is to try to persuade a computer to translate inscriptions this is a much much more complicated thing but in my opinion theoretically it should be perfectly doable because if i can do it with my brain then i think a computer with its greater extent um, should certainly be able to do it so when you see a cuneiform tablet under your eyes the first thing is that there is no gap between the words they wrote in a continuous line. So when you're a student, when you're a beginner, this is a problem. You have to learn how to select the right values to make words because all the signs have more than one value or use. So when you see a line of cuneiform, your mind goes like, and then, and you test things that fit together and make a word. And the, 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 you can only do that if you know all the values of the signs, which are sometimes rather numerous. And secondly, the vocabulary of the words themselves. Because if you have a word in Babylonian, there's more than one way of spelling it. So, for example, the word sharatu means queen, the noun queen. And so in Akkadian, you can write it shara two with three signs or you could write sha ar ra two or many other things as well there might be five or six alternatives and the computer would have to have sufficient mobility when it sees a word and the signs to work both together to find the right word and that would fit with the signs available so this is when you do it professionally so to speak or as a as a as a and a seriologist you do this all the time the mind does it all the time so if you work hard i can read cuneiform like newsprint more or less unless if there's a break 
or damage or something. But normally speaking, and, and this is something very esoteric or complicated, but normally speaking, I can read an A form like a person might read the Times newspaper. So you could get that out of a computer if if you put in everything, which would say all the signs, all the values, all the words and the grammar. So mm. there's a four sacks of things. And on top of that, my dear sir, there is the problem that over 3,000 years, the shapes of the signs evolve. Mm. So you've heard of King Hammurabi. He had a very fancy sign form arrangement. But the Ashurbanipal ones are very economical and streamlined. So you also have to teach the computer that one particular sign could look like this, like that, like that, like that. And the ones at the two ends are often rather different, difficult. So you'd have to have a very obedient computer with endless space and um, people to put in step by step all that was necessary. I believe that in principle, it should be perfectly possible. And the result would be something like this. In the old days, if you bought from Asia a camera, um, it would come with instructions in a kind of English, which was done by somebody working from the native language with a dictionary, looking up each word and putting them together. So when you read it, the first thing you would do was laugh because sometimes it's so <laughs> weird, but you would know what what had happened. So you'd be able to adjust. And this would be the same kind of level, probably more diffuse. But it, with the passage of time, if it was pursued, and um, controlled and progress was looked for, it should be perfectly possible to design it. We discussed it once with Google, and th they said, because um, uh, Google has this ambition, it used to be to be able to translate anything into English. That was their, I believe, their initial plan. But then now it's much more sophisticated. Theoretically, it's to translate any one language into any other language. So that's a really serious yeah. problem. And I thought, well, if they can do that, what's wrong with Babylonian? Um, but, and they came and looked at it and discussed it. And it, it, I think the thing was to, to, to do it properly will be very costly. And they, they work, they have priorities which are not deciphering clay tablets. But I imagine one day this will happen. And there's another reason why it might become very more, very much more important, because at the moment it's for experiment and for investigation. But it, the, 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 the maxim is, you know, we have 120,000, probably there are 200,000 tablets out of the ground in the museums of the world, something like 200,000 collections, museums and so forth. Well, the, the flip side of that is that almost all tablets ever written are still in the ground because clay lasts in the ground. So unless it was willfully destroyed, the chances are that there are millions of tablets in the soil of Iraq, millions of them. And in a way, it's quite a good thing that most of them are still there. But if the world, for example, gave up wars, I mean, that's a big thing to ask, but say they had a plan that they give up wars and take up archaeology and so that there was extensive excavation of Iraq there would be millions of tablets and uh, at that stage if that ever does happen that sort of thing then a program which you could put them under and it would go across and give you a basic translation would be something that would be much more urgent so to speak mm -hmm. than it is now of course if they do it now I'll be out of a job so I'm not so keen <laughs> They need to wait a little while. <laughs> um, wow, that's actually really wild that y'all have already had that conversation with Google. I'm, that's hmm. that's cool though, because that means at least it's in it's in the mind of them. It's in the that, mind, and I think individuals have have had had a go at it as well, because you know wherever there's a, a bunch of geniuses in a lab. Um, and they get an idea like this. They put their heads together and, and, and see. But I, 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 I've I read that things have been done and so forth. But it, it's like all these things. It, um, it's a faltering beginning. But um, in the end, I think it will become perfectly possible. I mean, the miraculous things happen. For example, if you have a burnt scroll 
with 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 the letters rolled up inside they can read without opening the scroll with a computer inside and turn it around and it's incredible yeah so, that's they, that's they did that a lot in Qumran correct isn't that uh where that came yes, into use I, when they pulled the Dead Sea yes. Scrolls yeah that's right so I mean this there's, there's, there's no limit to what human brains can do it's absolutely staggering and they spend all their time fucking around I mean it's amazing <laughs> killing people you know the amount of i mean it's atrocious it's atrocious when you think what you could do however we just have to hope for the best 